Hello, Sanele. Yes, yes. How are you, Sam? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, so my question was um about today's um consumer sentiment reports. Yeah. Right. So I noticed that it came out um negative for the dollar. Mm -hmm. But immediately um it looked like the 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 um the dollar strengthened looking at what was happening on the currency pairs. Yep. It definitely did. So, so I was I was trying to make sense of it. So it looks like um although um the um consumer confidence is low. Yeah. So that means people that means um the dollar is still relatively expensive in the American economy. It's still expensive to get and generate dollars with the dollar. So that means th there's still potential dollar strength. That's how I understood it. Okay. Am, am I on the right track or is there more I need to, to do to see the full picture? Okay. Can you just repeat the last part you said about uh, consumer country before, before you got to the fact of uh, you seeing the dollar being expensive? So Yeah, I, because yeah. What, what I, I was expecting um the fact that um the, the consumer confidence uh, index came out low to be bad for the dollar by looking at what was happening across the charts, it showed immediate uh -huh. dollar strength and then uh -huh. it, it seemed to balance out later in the day. Yeah. Okay. So I, I was wondering how... Okay. Yeah. No, no. Now I get you. Okay. Uh, let me try and open the calendar here so that I can show you. I think it's better if I, if I show you this on the actual uh, okay. calendar as well. Okay. So there is something okay. you missed. You are, you are spot on with the consumer confidence because it came yeah. with low expectations that you would expect yeah. the dollar to go lower. But the market yeah. was not focusing on the consumer confidence. Okay. Yeah, and that is what I'll, I'll try and uh, and show okay. you shortly if if I can get this calendar to open up. Uh, but essentially, <clears throat> uh, okay, while we wait for the calendar to open up, I think, I think I'll, let me just ex explain it while, while I wait for the calendar. Okay, to sure. So, what happened was, or what comes with the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment or Consumer Confidence Survey yeah. is what we call inflation expectations. Oh, okay. Remember that the driving force is inflation. Remember what I said yeah. in that session yeah. that we had, that everything, yeah. every data point that you get, you should center it back to inflation. Obviously, with consumer confidence, if, if consumers are not confident, then that means that consumers will also not be confident to spend money. So that means that it exactly. won't contribute to the demand of goods and services. So that is possibly, uh, it, it contributes negatively to inflation. By negatively, I mean that inflation going down. So it contributes in a way yeah. that would, would we would see inflation to go lower because consumers are not spending that much. But then, exactly. but then what we had as part of, as part of that uh, survey, like I said, or that, that report is the inflation expectations. But when it comes to the inflation expectations, uh, okay, I think my calendar is up now. Okay, can you now see the calendar? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so let us go to the report. So as you can see, University of Michigan's sentiment, like you said, came out at 67, it was expected to be at 76, which is way low, way, way low, right? Even below 70. So that is really bad. And the dollar should have weakened if we were only focusing on this. But look at what we also have. Michigan five-year inflation expectations, right? And then we also have Michigan inflation expectations. This is the one-year inflation expectation. So let us look at the one-year inflation expectation and see what is happening with the number that we got today and how the trend has been going. So as you can see, the year ahead inflation expectation in the U.S. picked up to 3.5% in May, the highest in six months right? From 3.2% in the prior month. It was expected to come out at 3.2%. It actually came out at 3.5%. So what does that mean? The word gives it that away, means, obviously. One year inflation yeah, inflation. expectations. So that means that expectations of, of inflation or, yeah, expectations is that inflation will go higher in the next year. Yeah. And then if we also look at the trend, March, it was at 29 April 3.2, May 3.5. That's three readings yeah. going up. So that is yeah. showing that inflation might be rebounding. And this yeah. is just inflation expectations. If we actually go into the actual inflation, CPI, 
we will see that also that is what we got that in the first quarter of 2024 inflation came yeah. out greater than what was expected so that is showing that, that what inflation is rebounding higher okay. then if we go back yeah. to the lesson what does that tell you samo interest rates will have to be raised soon yeah or, or they will be expected to remain higher for longer for longer yes, yes. so that so means now, no rate cuts anytime soon ex exactly so now interest rate expectations continue going higher so what does that mean since yeah. the currency follows in interest rate expectations it also goes higher so that is why exactly. we, even though we had that negative um in terms of the consumer confidence which is also a very a very important indicator because it's a leading mm -hmm. indicator on the consumer mm -hmm. side or on the it's a consumption indicator so mm -hmm. but because the market is particularly paying attention to inflation and inflation expectations that is why we saw that sort of uh, reaction. Let us look at the five year and see how the five year is tracking because this okay. is the one inflation expectations. So now, as you can see with the five year, it rose to 3.1% compared to 3% in the prior month, according to OK, mm -hmm. according to a preliminary estimate. Then what we can also see is that March 2.8, 3%, 3.1%. OK, there's yeah. a saying that goes this way. Uh, excuse me, I'm not sure if I also said it in our session. If if some yeah. they say if something happens once, it's a it's it's a phenomenon. If it happens twice, it's a coincidence. If it happens three times or more, it's a trend. We, we've okay. seen inflation expectations going up, the one year going up, the two year going up. So what does that mean? That means that inflation expectations have been unanchored or they no longer yeah. anchored, right? By anchored, anchored it, it should make sense, right? Just like an anchor. Yeah of a ship if it anchors then it, it holds it in position but if it's unanchored yeah. then it's it can move in either way in yeah. either way right in this case they unanchored and so the upside there's more upside risks to inflation than there are downside risks so like you said beautifully interest rate cuts <clears throat> pushed further into the future and then the fed should remain higher for longer in terms of their interest rates okay thank you now, now i understand yeah, so that is that was just what you missed there. But yeah. you were spot on with the actual consumer confidence uh, number. Yeah, thanks, thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> uh, anyone else with a question? Okay, not anyone else, but uh, the other gentleman. I have a question. Uh, yes, Michael? <clears throat> All right, um, so... I've been uh, reading articles um, for the past two weeks now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm all, okay, I, I think I lost your audio there. If you, if you are mm -hmm. using maybe headsets, try and unplug them and try. I'm not sure whether you're using your phone or a laptop or what. Just try and use the actual device's speaker. Let's see if that okay. works. Okay, okay. Uh, can you now you're me? audible. Now I can hear you, yeah. My question is mm, no, okay, your vo your your vol your your audio keeps pitched, yeah, it keeps dropping and then Okay, I'm gonna try to increase okay. my uh, now I can hear you. Whatever position okay. you're in right now, try and maintain that position as close to the All mic. Right. All right. So yeah. I was uh, I've been reading art articles for the past two weeks now. Yeah. Regarding the Bank of Japan intervention, since um, um, JPY pairs have been going higher, and its index has been going lower, and yeah. it was uh, uh suspected that the Bank of Japan was going to um inter uh, intervene mm -hmm. uh with its currency um during the inflation uh report. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I'm not correct, the report isn't out yet or it's out, but I missed it. But since there was a move, uh, big sales last week um, mm -hmm. showing um, yen strength, was yep. that the intervention or it was just some other data? I don't know. Or... It, 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 was, it, it was an intervention. It has not, it oh, has so... not, it, it has not been confirmed. Uh, but it was an intervention because we've seen a similar move around September 2022. That is when the Bank of Japan also intervened, right? Uh, and like you said, they intervened by actually buying up the currency. 
uh, and so that so that it can strengthen obviously against whatever they're selling it against or they're buying it against. Sorry. Uh, so that those type of movements, it's intervention. Even though the the minister of finance, because <clears throat> uh, in in Japan, it's not the Bank of Japan that initiates. Uh, the intervention. It's the finance ministry that initiates the intervention, and then obviously, the people who pull the trigger. It's the Bank of Japan. <clears throat> so, comments so far have been that uh, they have not intervened, but then we will fully know. It 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 is characteristics of intervention. That that is what I, I can really say. It it is an intervention, even though they they denying it, because they never say that. Okay, guys, we are now intervening, and then everyone starts buying up the Japanese yen together to, uh, in line with the with the with the Bank of Japan. No, they intervene, and then they generally come out after, and they say they intervene. But this time, they they said they did not intervene. But then we always get data at the end of the month. Uh, we always get data at the end of the month that actually gives. How can I put? Uh, uh, um, uh, okay, the simplest way to put it is that it sort of gives like. A balance a balance sheet essentially right of the actual funds so then you get to see what happened with the funds so the the one that we most recently got was from Mar in april now it was from march until i think the 28th of march right the first of march until the 28th of march not the first but after the 28th of of um february then to March, then to, to the 28th of March, right? And then intervention happened after those days. So that is why the report that we had that we got that got released in the beginning of May did not include the days when when we saw what strengthening of the Japanese. And so we'll get that that data at the end of the month. And that would actually be a confirmation of how much or how big, but currently most economists or most, let's say, market participants uh, or some sources, they suspect it was around, I think, close to 50, 50, 50 billion, right, in dollars in, in terms of the intervention. But essentially, there was intervention. There's, there's, no, there's, there's no market movement that can, no, no, no news release that could have moved or, or resulted in a drop from 160 all the way to around... 150, 151, 152. No, it's definitely intervention. Uh, did I answer your question, Michael? Yes. Okay, can you can you can you move closer to your mic? I can't hear you. Uh, I can't hear you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Can't hear you. Wow. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. So my question is, did it succeed? Should we keep on looking for the sell-off or it's done? Okay. So so we'll take that because we'll take it's still part of the same question. So it's not a second question. It's, it's essentially right. a follow-up question. So... We wouldn't necessarily expect further intervention, even though yes, they still they still have some comments here and there that FX moves and and what 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 is the word that they use? I've forgotten the actual word, but essentially where they point out that uh, sharp moves in 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 the FX markets are undesirable, right? Or they they paying attention to them or keeping a close eye to those moves, right? But we shouldn't really be that much expecting or anticipating further intervention. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen, but there are triggers to intervention. Firstly, it is excessive depreciation of the what? Of the currency. If we look, if, okay. Uh, okay, it's gonna take a bit of time if I try and open up trading view now. But if we, okay, let me open it. So if we, if, if you if we look, what had happened was it was it Friday the they it was dovish obviously, and then there was huge selling of the Japanese yen. So I'm trying to explain some of the criteria that they is excessive or sharp weakness. Oh yeah, that's the that's the word that they use. They say 
excessive moves in the F they, they 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 closely watching excessive moves in the FX markets. So that is the first thing. If the move is excessive, so let me try and open uh, USDJPY. Uh, have your stitch opening okay so as you can see we had the interest rate decision from the bank of japan obviously they held interest rates and they were dovish in their messaging with buying bonds right so essentially they still made even though they try they shifting towards a restrictive monetary policy position or stance but they still essentially easing right so the markets did not buy that or did not take that too kindly and we saw what we saw excessive depreciation of what of the japanese yen on the on the on friday right and then this is a sharp move this is what they call excessive move so what 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 triggers or some of the triggers it is an excessive move so if if there is an excessive depreciation of the yen look at if you can look this is the daily time frame if you look at all these daily okay this this was a sharp move this was a sharp move but if you look at the range of all these daily candles compared to what we saw on friday this is def this is obviously excessive right so this was a trigger that it is has depreciated or there was there was a the pace of depreciation in one day was too high and too sharp that is one of the triggers that would expect intervention so here this 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 was obviously what was expected because i remember in the zoom session on sunday i had told the guys that we should anticipate some form of intervention because of how huge or how how the week the, the yen weekend on friday that was too excessive number one and we are approaching 160 so it moved from 154 the low of 154 on friday to 160 in two days Right, essentially in one day, because it was on Friday, then this was on Monday, early hours of the morning, it, it jumped up to 160 and then shot off. So that is an excessive move. So that is the trigger essentially of an intervention. So now to answer your, your follow-up question is, if you're looking at the moves that we had here and the fact that we no longer at 160 or we are way below 160, we are currently at 155 and look at how the market has been moving up. It hasn't been shooting up. So that means that yes, the yen is weakening because that is what is happening if USDJPY is going up, but the move has not been excessive like what we saw here. And they always stress that they are closely watching excessive moves or excessive depreciation in the end. So if I can try and go back to September uh, 2022, because that was the last time they intervened, it was around here, September 2022. Yeah, it was the first time they intervened. Not the first time in terms of history, but I'm saying that's the last time they intervened until now when they are suspected that they, they possibly intervened. But you can see the similarities in the sharpness of the move, right? But of the move, because it's, it's generally of excessive depreciation or strong, strong rally or, or, or sharp weakness of what? Of the Japanese and that here. But as you can see here, the movement was deposed and then a rally, right? But that is essentially the trigger. So that is why I say I wouldn't really be Bet, not betting, but essentially watching or expecting an intervention around the levels that we are right now and based on how market is moving. If we can push back to 160 or maybe let's say 159, then maybe I could expect that they will start uh, uh, start verbal intervention again and saying that they're not happy with the excessive moves, blah, 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 blah. Does that answer your question, Michael? Sorry about that. I actually muted you. Oh, yes, it does. It does answer. So, okay. yes, it does. I'm just wondering if it will sell again. Sorry? I'm just wondering if it will sell again. Why Why do you want to bet on a sell? Because uh, when they intervene, they it usually follows up with sales. Yeah, yeah. No, if they intervene, they buying the currency. So obviously, it's gonna appreciate and everything, and the other, and whatever it's it's paid against, it's gonna sell. But I'm saying, oh, okay. generally, unless there is a change in the in the bigger picture or in the bigger fundamental picture, interventions. How can I put it? It's like putting a band aid on an artery, right? You can block the ble bleeding for a couple of times, but that 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 bandage, because you're putting it over an artery, what will happen? It will eventually get soaked in blood, and then it will it will be rendered useless, right? So that's essentially how interventions work, essentially. To my to my 
to my exp on my from my experience because if if it were a shift in the fundamental bigger picture then we wouldn't seeing we wouldn't be seeing what weakness of the japanese yen people or let's say investors and market participants are selling the yen because fundamentally the picture is not so good remember they they started increasing interest rates in uh march yeah march 2024 right so you'd expect that they would start shifting to being more hawkish but no they still maintaining the same position right they still buying bonds so essentially if you can try and look at it to a certain extent is that we trying to put out the fire but we also pouring a bit of gasoline from time to time so what are, what are the markets going to do with that they're going to sell that cuz it's it's to a, it, to a certain extent it, it it comes across as if you don't know what you're doing so they can intervene and push the currency and strengthen the yen but as long as the bottom line the bigger picture has not changed the market will sell the yen again when the opportunity arises uh so what other questions uh do we have from the other gentlemen uh, sabelo Hi, Sanel. How are you, my brother? I'm good. I'm good, Sabel. How are you? Nice to hear nice. from you, man. Hey, I'm, I'm all right, man. <laughs> I'm all right. Oh, that's good. So, um, okay, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I don't really have a question because um, it seems like you guys are speaking a foreign language to me because I'm not really versed when it comes to fundamentals. Okay. But I've been seeing your video. I, I think I saw your videos on YouTube, and I've been seeing seeing you posting about it. Yeah. Um. And it hits me that um maybe I really need to uh learn the fundamentals. I think it will play an integral part in my trading. Yeah. No, definitely. So that is why I. Yeah. It will. It will. That that's so, without a doubt. So what I can do, Sabelo, is that okay? You can uh you can send me a a a a, a private message either if, even on uh any socials, uh and then I we can yeah. schedule a Zoom mm -hmm. session where I have a Zoom session just to quickly uh, put you up to speed in terms of just the, the basic, simple uh, approach to fundamentals. Because most of the gentlemen that we have here, that is essentially what I also put them on, just that quick speed up, uh, simplified explanation of how fundamentals work and how you can start looking at them yeah. and approaching them. Yes, it's basic level, but it's it, it I think it gets the point across. Maybe some of the other guys can actually vouch for that, for, vouch for that, that it actually does get the point across, right, of the importance of fundamentals. But I think that's what I can do uh, just to put you up to speed uh, or with everyone else. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that will really help. Because obviously, if, as I say, I'm clueless when it comes to fundamentals, you will um, know where to start with me or whatever the, the case might be then. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I'll do exactly that. We'll, I'll send you a private uh, message then. Okay. No problem, so brother. Can... Yeah. No problem. Okay. Thanks, man. No problem. Uh, Darren, do you have a question? Because initially it wasn't a question. Uh, when the when the when the other gentleman joined joined us, I uh, was actually just explaining gold. Uh, do you have a question? Hello. Uh, yes, Darren. Yeah, I'm looking at the current CPA. I just testing my knowledge. So I've been looking at UM USDCHF for yeah. a, a long position. Now, why so is that I see that the CHF, the central bank of CHF, they try to I increase the, the interest rate, but they reduce it again, which is giving me some kind of like, they are not certain that they want to increase the interest rate. And I see that they are increasing the money supply and the balance sheets, which is going to increase, which is going to um, devalue the currency in a bit. So I see 
that they are not yet fixed on increasing their interest rate. So what I say again is that the CPI of the the inflation of the uh, what do they call it of CHF. of CHF is low, which is very is low, which um theoretically they should increase their interest rate, but they are not increasing it. What they are trying to do is increase the money supply and the the balance sheet. So I I see and I see um USD that USD is increasing. Um no no USD's um inflation is starting to rise up. It's starting to build momentum. Yeah. So see USD as as they might likely keep their rates fixed. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking at a long opportunity, a swing long opportunity on the USD. Um, so what, yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, I am I am short the Swiss franc. Uh, okay. some some of the things you okay maybe maybe because you 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 most recently yeah. started paying attention to it. Uh, but oh, I do have my spreadsheet open. So let's go to the spreadsheet and I'll and I'll show you. I I'm actually long on AUDCHF. I've been looking. I've been waiting for opportunities to go long on uh on uh. USD Swiss franc, but I uh, haven't been getting the, the, the type of pullbacks that I want. But let us go to inflation, right? So the Swiss the Swiss franc or the Swiss economy or the Swiss central bank or Swiss national bank, sorry, uh, they started increasing interest rates. Uh, I think it was around June, if I'm not mistaken, 2022. Right. So I just want I just want to show you something with the inflation because remember we we tie everything back to inflation. You got the inflation part right that it's low, but they're not gonna increase interest rates at this point because they are coming from an interest rate an interest rate hike cycle. They actually just came out of it. They started cutting interest rates. I think it was yeah it was March March twenty twenty four. That is when the the Swiss National Bank actually started cutting interest rates. So if we inflation inflation targets for most developed economies essentially around the same. So let us put it at 2%, right? Yeah. If you look at the Swiss, if you look at the Swiss inflation, it went all the way up till around when did it cross above 2%? In February 2022. That's when it crossed around over 2%. Continued to go up around June, it was sitting at 3.4%. That is when they started hiking interest rates. And another thing with the Swiss National Bank is the fact that they do not have as regular meetings as all the other central banks. I think they have four meetings per year. So for them, okay. they they whatever decision they make, they need to make it not really necessarily fast, but they need to think ahead. Because for some central banks, they might have a meeting every second month or maybe a meeting month to month or back to back, you know? So, so But for the Swiss, they don't. So what happened was around June, July 2020, 2022, they were they were at, they were not expected to increase interest rates, even though inflation was at 3.4, which is way above their targets. And you would be essentially anticipating based on what I showed you guys. But people were not ready, or they were still anticipating that they just gonna keep interest rates on hold. But what happened was that uh, if we just go into interest rates. Okay, this 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 uh, spreadsheet is still loading or updating some of the data. Just let's just give it a a couple of seconds. It should be done by now. Should be done. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if we then look at interest rates, as you can see, for Swiss franc. They started hiking interest rates. Okay, it was in June. Yes, June 2022. It moved from negative 0 0.75. So they hiked by 50 basis point, which is 0.5% to negative 0 0.25. They had already started hiking interest rates. But mind you, when it comes to uh, Swiss, they, they have a history of very low inflation. So when they started hiking interest rates, but for all the other economies, they only started hiking interest rates when inflation was in the ranges of 4%, 5%, 7% for some economies. But for Swiss, they started early. So 
that is why, that is one, not why, but essentially one of the reasons why their inflation quickly started falling, as you can see. So around, around June, not, not June, but essentially around 2020, yeah, it was June, June 2023, as you can see, inflation in Switzerland had already dropped back to what? Below their target of 1.7. And then it continued to fall and continued to fall. And then that is why going into 2024, we were already positioning ourselves to do what? To sell the Swiss franc. Because if inflation had just went above their target by 1.4%, because it was sitting at 3.4% and they decided to increase interest rates, if inflation is now below their target, they are probably going to what? Act fast and what? And start cutting interest rates. And essentially that is what happened, right? With, with the Swiss economy. So they came out in March and they actually cut interest rates when, when markets were not expecting, they were expecting them to hold interest rates, but they cut interest rates. So I just, I'm, exp I'm taking this longer route to explain it so that you don't get it twist or you don't mix it up and say that you, you think they should be increasing interest rate because inflation is low. No, they are coming from high inflation and they were increasing all this time. And now they are cutting because inflation has now went back below their target, right? So it's actually, a, a, they are inflation, they're actually happy with where inflation is because they're coming from what? From high inflation. Obviously, if it dips, if it continues to drop and moves closer to zero, then they could possibly act and do it and start increasing interest rates. But in terms of your analysis or bias, you are correct. Because I'm also I also have the same bias of selling the Swiss franc. Because as you can see, inflation dipped to one percent in March 2024. So inflation has been going low because they had they were previously what increasing interest rates and now they are cutting interest rates. So obviously that means the currency is going to weaken, and that is why we look to go short uh, Swiss franc. Does that make sense? I just wanted to polish yeah. up the re the the the. Yeah. the the reasons for the Swiss franc, but you are spot on analysis of the bias. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think that brings us to the end of our Q and A session. Um, unless if there's anyone, okay, bonus question. If anyone has their last question. Maybe I can take because we we not over because I generally do an hour exactly. We like what 52 min 52 minutes. So we still have like let's say seven minutes more. So if anyone has a question, they can go ahead. Yeah, long done. You can understand you can ask. Yeah, so I was I was wondering, um, based on what happened today, how can I best filter um news events when there's multiple news releases and sometimes it may be conflicting how can i filter to know which are the key which are the real key um uh, economic factors to look at because sometimes you, you may have multiple economic news coming out and you don't know which one is actually the one you should be paying attention to so how that's what i want to know how can i best filter um news news articles out to know which ones really impact the um, which, which ones the market is really going to watch it's by understanding the central bank of that okay. economy. It's by understanding that the Fed, the Federal Reserve has a dual mandate, which means that what? Maximum employment and low inflation or inflation around, yeah, low inflation essentially around the 2% target. So anything that interferes with them achieving that dual mandate goal, it's going to definitely move the market. But I say also, are they paying attention to it? Because that is when now, like I like I'd said, what I was showing you guys was the foundation. I was laying the foundation. Then we come to the central banks, reading the central bank statements, watching the central bank press conference after their interest rate decisions, because they give you clue. They tell you what they what they are looking at, what they are paying attention to. So as I'll make just make an example, Jerome Powell said in the in the in their in their press conference last week Wednesday, or the FOMC press conference that they pay attention to wages but it's not important in terms of what them deciding on monetary policy. So immediately, even though wages is important to the bigger picture because it contributes to inflation, if wages are going up, it's going to feed into inflation. 
But Jerome Powell just said for the United States, they do consider them, but they are not as important in coming to a decision of whether they're increasing interest rates or cutting interest rates. But what did he keep, kept on mentioning? We'll be looking at what? Inflation as well as inflation expectations. And then he also said what? We'll be looking at unemployment, right? If there's unexpected weakness in the unemployment rate, and he kept on, and, and one of the lady or the journalists, they asked him a question. So if you mentioned weakness in the labor market, and he said, I mentioned unexpected weakness. The lady said weakness, and he said unexpected weakness. And it did not, it did not emphasize that just for the fun of it. There's a reason why he emphasized unexpected weakness, right? In the labor market, the journalist went on to say, so if inflation jumps up to 4%, then would you look to, to cut interest rate? And it's like, not really, just a couple of ticks higher in what in the, un in the unemployment rate, sorry, wouldn't really be enough or sufficient to push, at, to push us to cut interest rates. So if you watch that, and you're attentive to it, he's telling you everything you need to know or to pay attention to essentially for the US dollar. Inflation, inflation expectations, because they want to gain more confidence that inflation is going down before they look to cut interest rates. But he even said in the first quarter of 2024, we do not gain that confidence that inflation is going down. So we need to pay more attention to inflation than unemployment. But not just weakness in the labor market, which is why on Friday, when you had NFP, there was weakness in the labor market. Yes, the dollar sold off because the current market, uh, or let, yeah, the current uh, market reaction function is that it negative news or negative moves are exaggerated for the dollar. Understandably so. People have been waiting to sell the dollar for what for the past three years. So now, if they get an opportunity to sell the dollar, they actually jump on those dollar sells, right? Even though there is more evidence that the, the US economy is resilient. But where am I going with that? To the fact that even though NFP data was weak, unemployment ticked from 3.8 to 3.9. Yes, there's weakness in the labor market. Yes, it's only just one data point. But then he mentioned it in the press conference before NFP on Friday that just a couple of ticks higher in what in the labor market or in the unemployment rate would not be enough to push them to do what to cut interest rates and secondly they want to see unexpected weakness so now for us to understand unexpected weakness because he said in the press conference i won't go into the details of what unexpected weakness is for us to understand unexpected weakness we need to do it go to the to the to the central bank's uh, website go into their latest um, monetary policy statement where they actually gave the summary of economic projections. It's called SEP. There, the central bank gives you their projections of unemployment, inflation, and GDP in 2024, 2025, 2026. And there, or let me say the Fed, which is the US central bank, their projections for unemployment in 2024 is anywhere in the ranges of 3.8 to the maximum being 4.5%. So that means that if inf unemployment is within that range, or let's say of four of 3.8 to 4.1%, then there is not unexpected weakness in the labor market or unexpected increase in the unemployment rate because they, wow. they already have it in their SEP projection. So that is why even though, yes, labor, the NFP data was weak, but it has not changed what market pricing of interest rate, of interest rate cuts or the Fed keeping interest rates higher for longer. Because they are, they, the unemployment rate there is part of what they are expecting because it's part of their SEP, their Summary of Economic Projections for 2024, that they expect unemployment to be in the range of 38 to 4.5%. Understandably so, they are expecting unemployment to go up because interest rates are high. But it so anything that would be unexpected weakness that could push the Fed to look to cut interest rates because of in, because of unemployment, because remember, like I said, it's a dual mandate. So they're looking at inflation and, un, and the labor market. Only if inflation, if unemployment, let's say, were to come out the next uh, NFP data, and then of, obviously the unemployment is part of that report, if it were to jump to 4.6%, or even let's say 4.5%, now that is unexpected weakness, right? So as long if it's anywhere in the ranges of 38 3.9, 4%, 4.1%. Yes, it's showing weakness in the labor market, but 
he kept on emphasizing the word unexpected weakness. So that is that is, that is where that is where that is that would be the next step for you to understand is to now expand your horizon and that okay, what who 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 what are the people who are responsible for that for this economy saying? What are they looking at? And that is where you now go to the central banks because they are mandated, it's their job. Uh, they are hired by that 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 specific country to do what to maintain price stability to ensure that the financial system is running smoothly and all of that. So I doubt they want to jeopardize that or just wake up one morning and be like, I'm gonna make sure that my family starves, so I'm gonna make wrong decisions purposefully and and uh, excuse my French, screw up the economy. I doubt that is what they do. They wake up and and have that sort of mentality. So if I pay attention to them because they are being paid, they are they are employed to do this they will try by all means to do a good job. So if I understand what they're looking at, what they're saying, then already when I'm looking at the data, I can put two and two together and come up with, with, with a better interpretation of how, of the type of impact it will have. Thank you, that answers my question perfectly. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Samuel, you're welcome. Okay, guys, yeah, it's an hour now uh thank you for your time gentlemen and uh for tuning in i hope uh, i was thank able you. to answer all your questions and you were satisfied thank with you, the man. answers uh see you next friday if you will be available uh same time same place of course yeah. okay <laughs> okay enjoy cheers guys. sorry enjoy the rest of the day okay 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 Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Have a good have yourselves a good night. Two. Thanks. Bye. Yes, yes.